For more than half of a century, progress has been closely linked to Moore's law, giving us a constant increase in computing power. Then, two years ago, Jensen Huang, the CEO of NVIDIA, one of the world's leading computer companies, declared Moore's law dead. But now, he hasn't only changed his mind, he thinks that we'll see a hyper Moore's law. The way people think about Moore's law, which is uh, uh, 2x every couple of years, um, you know, we're going to be on some kind of a hyper Moore's law curve. And um, I, I fully hope that we continue to do that. Before we look at he meant with that, a big thank you to all our supporters on Patreon, especially those of you in Tier 4 and higher. Your help is greatly appreciated. And you too can help us on Patreon or by joining this channel right here on YouTube. Right, so now about Moore's Law. It's been with us since 1965, when Gordon Moore, one of the brains behind Intel, noticed that the number of transistors on a microchip was doubling roughly every two years at a minimal increase of cost. Moore's Law has largely held true until a few years ago, which was when Huang declared Moore's Law dead. This is primarily because transistor sizes are hitting physical limits. They're now in the nanometer range and becoming increasingly more difficult to cool. Last year, I made a video about what new technologies are in the works that could continue Moore's law. That could be photonic computing, carbon nanotubes, spintronics or quantum dots. But none of those are ready for mass production yet. And whatever will happen to the supposedly impending artificial intelligence explosion if Moore's law fails us? So what NVIDIA has been doing in Instead is optimizing the relation between software and hardware. Huang calls this co-design. The first example of this was the distinction between CPU, that are the general processing units of a computer, and GPU, the graphics processing units, especially designed for, well, graphics. NVIDIA now also has GPUs that are especially designed for matrix operations, that are used a lot in the training of neural networks, that are used for the currently most common type of artificial intelligence. These GPUs have excellent extra logical circuits called tensor cores. But besides training neural nets, there are other reasons for why you might want to choose suitable hardware based on the software. For example, the current state-of-the-art precision for calculations is 64 bits. But maybe you don't need 64 bits to calculate what ad goes on top of the page, which seems to be most of what they calculate at Google these days. So you might want to have a system that adapts the calculation depth depending on the problem from 64 to 32 or even 4 bits. This doesn't just speed up calculations, it also saves energy. This is why this co-design of software and hardware can both get you faster calculations and save energy. And that's what Huang refers to as Hypermore's law, a performance increase that outpaces Moore's doubling law. Uh, our hope is that we could double or triple performance every year at, at scale. Not at chip, at scale. And to be able to therefore drive the cost down by a factor of two or three, drive the energy down by a factor of two or three every single year. When you do that every single year, when you double or triple every year, in just a few years, it adds up. <laughs> so it compounds really, really aggressively. And NVIDIA is on the way already. Earlier this year, they released the Blackwell platform that they say speeds up the training of large language models by a factor of 30 and that of simulations by more than 20 times. That's what they say. So far, there haven't been any independent tests. Instead, customers are reporting that the chips are overheating. The key feature of the new platform is the improved linking between GPUs that allows to distribute data processing in the most optimal way. They do this with a system that NVIDIA calls NVLink. This is NVLink and it goes across the entire back spine of a rack of GPUs. And these GPUs are all connected from the top to the bottom using NVLink driving these incredible CERTES, the world's longest driving CERTES for copper, and it connects uh, all of these GPUs together.
This platform is targeted primarily at enterprise level and research oriented applications such as AI companies, supercomputing facilities and large scale scientific projects. But Downwind will probably all get something out of it. Did you know that I have a free weekly newsletter with some extra news items? You can sign up at sabinehossenfelder.com slash newsletter. That said, a lot of companies are now also developing chips that are especially suitable for AI training. They're called Neural Processing Units, NPUs for short. Interestingly enough, this is something which NVIDIA is not doing. But big companies like Intel, AMS and Samsung are banking on NPUs and some dedicated startups are working on that too. These NPUs could become one of the main rivals to NVIDIA. By the way, when I said that Moore's law kept the production cost roughly stable despite increases in computing power, that's the production cost after development. The necessary investments into research and development have increased by roughly a factor 20 since the 1960s. And that's one of the examples of how we have to make more and more effort in research that I just talked about the other day. And when NVIDIA is done with that co-design, maybe someone can go and figure out how to get my phone to communicate with the printer. That'd be great. To me, science is more than a profession. It's a way to understand the world and to solve problems. This is why I'm happy to work together with Brilliant, whose mission is to help you learn science in the easiest and most engaging way possible. Brilliant.org offers courses on a large variety of topics in science, computer science and mathematics. All their courses have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. Some even have executable Python scripts or videos with little demonstration experiments. Whether you want to know more about large language models or quantum computing, want to learn coding in Python or know how computer memory works, Brilliant has you covered. And they're adding new courses each month. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with their course on quantum computing or differential equations. And of course, I have a special offer for users of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for full 30 days. And you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.